Hello and welcome everyone, this is Mr. Umath again and in today's video I want to show you guys how to calculate the gradient, divergence and curl in different coordinate systems, okay? Maybe you even don't know that, but uh, you know these definitions, you know how to calculate the gradient, you know how to calculate the divergence and maybe also the curl. Um, but maybe you might think that you can uh, do this kind of calculation for any kind of coordinate system that you have. For example, you have Cartesian, you use that for x1, x2, x3, the standard coordinates x1, x2, and x3. And if you go to polar coordinate, you might be tempted to think, um, uh, I mean by polar coordinates, I actually mean cylindrical or spherical, coordinates you might be tempted to say that okay this is just r r this is just a phi and this is for example z in uh, cylindrical coordinates and uh, so forth but that actually doesn't work because these guys are depending uh, on the coordinate system that you chose okay and i have written down these formulas okay you see on the right hand side these are the general formulas Okay, for example, the gradient can be calculated by this following expression. I have to transpose this vector. Um, 1 over h1. What this h1, h2 and h3 is, um, I will explain you in a while. Um, and you can go ahead and use this kind of definition here. The divergence is 1 over h1, h2, h3. And then you do uh, the partial in respect to the first coordinate, for example, in cylindrical coordinates, this would be r, this would be uh, phi, and this would be z. And then again, you multiply with these strange coefficients. These are actually called Lamé coefficients, named after uh, the French mathematician Gabriel Lamé, who did very, very a lot about curvilinear coordinate systems, and um, he actually was the one to um actually uh investigate these kind of coefficients now there's also a formula for the curl one over h1 h2 h3 then you calculate the determinant this is h1 again this q1 is so to say the unit vector um along your first coordinate unit vector along the second and third these are the partials in respect of your first coordinate second and third and this is h1 u1 which are the components of your vector okay uh, same counts for the above so you can uh, so u is just equal to u1 u2 and u3 okay now, you might be uh, thinking, okay, how can I actually ca calculate these h1, h2, and h3 values? Actually, the way is written down here, and I, we will talk about that in, in a minute. But first of all, I want to show you a list for all the guys of you who just want to know how to calculate this crap. I will show you here in this video first and then for all these guys who are interested in the more depth understanding of this method um, they can watch the rest of the video so first of all here for Cartesian coordinates this is quite trivial h1 h2 and h3 are equal to 1 for cylindrical coordinates if your first coordinate is r your second is phi your third is Q, uh, z then uh, these Lamé coefficients are h1 is equal to 1, h2 is equal to r, h3 is equal to 1. Now uh, we can also do this for spherical coordinates, r, uh, theta, phi, spherical coordinates, h1 is equal to 1, h2 is equal to uh, r, and h3 is equal to r sine theta. Now, um, um, in order to understand what uh, theta and phi is, I have drawn this very, very ugly um, coordinate system. So this is the x direction, this is y, and this is z. And imagine we would have some point p in here. Okay? And if you describe this p by some uh, radial distance r, this is here, so this is just the distance to the origin. Now, uh, then you have this angle phi, which is in the x, y plane. And then you have this uh, angle theta, which is the angle between your uh, the connection of origin and your point and the z-axis. This is called theta. 
And now you can just plug that in and calculate the crap out of your curls and divergence and gradient and all that funny stuff. Now, uh, the, the question that might arise for you is, how do I actually come to these guys? How can I find out that this is one, this is two, and this is three, and so forth? Uh, no, actually, this is not two and this is not three, but I hope you get what I want to say. Um, we want to have a look at this kind of um, um, curved volume. Okay, imagine we have some curved volume. This is the Q1 direction, this is the Q2 direction, and this is the Q3 direction. Now, the idea to calculate these Lamé coefficients is you calculate the lengths of this. Okay, for example, ds1 is h1. Okay, dq1. Okay, and ds2 very analogous is this guy here, and ds3 is equal to h3 d um, q3. Okay, now I will do a little bit of. Um, going through that and really derive all these kind of uh, coefficients. Um, I will leave the Cartesian coordinate out because it's it's quite easy because um, actually they uh, or actually I will do that so you get an idea about that. So this is the x direction, this is uh, the y direction and this is the z direction for example and let's imagine we had some cube in here okay this cube is lying in here how would we calculate this length? So this is dx, this is dy, and the height here is dz. So if you write down these uh, equations, so ds1, so this is your first uh, coordinate, is just 1 times dx, because there is nothing else in front of it, it's just 1 dx. Then ds2 is equal also to 1 dy, and ds is equal to 1 dz. So we got all the um, Lamy coefficients which h1 is 1, h2 is also 1 and h3 is equal to 1. Okay this was quite easy. Let's have a look at a more sophisticated um, uh, coordinate system. I'll try to draw this system so that you can get a so let's imagine we have here x coordinate and y co uh, not y coordinate sorry uh, the z coordinate and let's imagine into the depth we have our y coordinate okay now I'm actually talking about x y and z but what I want to have a look at is a spherical not a spherical a cylindrical piece it's really hard to draw but I hope maybe I should just draw it here so then it will be maybe a little bit easier to understand what I actually am talking about so okay this this worked out so let's uh, draw the dashed lines through okay now um, imagine that was our coordinate system and this is somewhere in here okay now in order to, or actually I'll draw a new coordinate system because this uh, will not help me and I will draw some helping lines, so some lines that would help me. So this is the x coordinate direction, this is the, again, why, my god, what am I doing here? <laughs> so, uh, we have that guy and the y coordinate uh, axis i won't draw that in because it will make it everything more complicated now um, as you can see this is a cylindrical coordinate system so we have um, r we have phi and we have z okay so in the r direction if you look at this guy here uh, so this is your ds1 what is this ds1 is simply dr okay if you're dr has a length of one millimeter then your ds1 is also one millimeter okay quite easy now um, i will do ds2 as the last one so now let's have a look at this guy here um, at the height okay this is also very easy because you see it here it's just dz 
okay so again we we can write it as one times dz because there is no factor in front of it now nothing special happened to this point um, because we are actually doing um, on linear if you want linear uh, coordinate plots but this guy is curved and now this is interesting okay because imagine we would have a angle in here I will call this d phi then how long is this length ds2 okay because we have a radius of r this is not simply d phi this is not simply d phi imagine if you double the distance uh, in r then this would get double the length so this actually depends on r okay i hope you know how to calculate these guys because this is just an arc length and if you want to calculate this arc length this is just the angle multiplied the radius of uh, this circle okay from that again we conclude h1 is equal to 1 h2 is equal to r and h3 is equal to 1 and check this this is the same as we had in here now let's go a little bit further down and do this for the most complicated case the spherical coordinate system now drawing that spherical coordinate system is quite hard but again we we do a little uh, volume slab out of a imagine this was a little piece of your spherical um, coordinate system this is so to say our dv okay and i drew this a little bit so I, this okay uh, it's really hard to draw <laughs> i hope you can um, so what i will do is again i will draw in x coordinate here is z coordinate and our y coordinate goes somewhere in here so let's draw that also so y coordinate now this is from perspectively this is totally wrong but I hope you get the main point of it now what we have to do is again we have to calculate ds1 ds2 ds3 okay now given that our uh, angles are r theta and phi uh, we can start off if we look at this length ds1 this is just this is r and hence this is dr okay this is simply on a linear scale so this is one times dr okay check the first coordinate done the second coordinate is theta okay now this is a little bit tricky because imagine our this angle here in between this is d theta okay because the angle counts from here this is theta so this is d theta okay now the radius again is r so how do we calculate this length okay this length is simply to be calculated as uh, almost the same as we did in a uh, cylindrical coordinates this is just r d theta okay this is r d theta now the last coordinate as I drew it like this this is a little bit harder to get because actually what we want to know is we want um, we have some maybe I'll draw a new picture so you get it a little bit better so let's make it a little bit more exaggerated okay again we have some kind of spherical uh, infinitesimal volume here and these guys are going running on here so my picture was not that good so here this is x this is z and in this direction very ugly drawn this is y now what I actually want to know is what happens with the last length okay how long is this length okay how long is this length now in order to calculate that I will project this into the xy plane okay okay this is our ds3 now how do we calculate that and this is a very often um, 
this step is often done wrong okay because now the radius here on this plane is not r this is just some r prime we'll have a look at what this r prime is but what we see is that this is r prime and if this angle change because we said this angle is phi okay this is in the x y plane okay even if that might look like i'm going up i'm actually only moving in the x y plane and this angle in here uh, I'm just uh, writing it here. This is just d phi. So this is r prime, the radius in this x y plane, multiplied with d phi. Now what is r prime? In order to find r prime, we have to do something very important. So what I'm doing is actually I'm writing here. This angle here is theta. Yes. So this angle here down there what is this this is actually pi halves minus theta okay I hope you can see it it's, it's really hard to see but um, this line here is in the xy plane so and this is the z so if this is this is theta this is so to say the complementary angle to that and if we do that now we can um, relate r and r prime to each other because the cosine of pi halves minus theta okay the cosine of this angle is this side which is r prime uh, divided with the hypotenuse okay which is this r now the left hand side seems to be complicated but actually this is nothing else than the sine of theta okay this is just the complementary angle and we could have done this this way also we could have say okay if this is pi half minus theta then this angle here is theta okay and then we could have done the sine because we could have say, it, uh, said that the sine of theta is equal to r prime over r again the same calculations but i think this is a more direct way now we can calculate this into here so this is sine theta d phi and now we have our Lamy coefficients h1 is equal to 1 h2 is equal to r and h3 is equal to r sine theta now uh, let's quickly check if this was the same that we had before and you see right we have found these guys here and we are done with our video actually i'm not done with this topic actually because i think there is a, a lot more interesting about it and i think some of you guys have still a question now i know these lame coefficients and i know how to draw this for the cartesian the cylindrical and the spherical coordinate system but what the heck do i do when i have some arbitrary kind of coordinate system okay um do I always have to draw this infinitesimally volume and then calculate these uh, ds1, ds2, and ds3 to find the Lamé coefficients, or is a is there a more sophisticated way of looking at uh, these Lamé coefficients, which are the 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 reason why we want these Lamé coefficients because in the end we want to calculate. Um, the gradient, the divergence, and the curl in different coordinate systems, okay? And in the next video, we will have a look how to do this more systematically without always drawing a picture and then deriving um, these expressions for the Lamé coefficients, okay? That's actually it. I hope you had fun, and I hope you stay tuned for the next video. And that's it. See you guys.